Good morning friends. Today we are going to discuss about the VPN V4 based on the basic segment routing. So this is the MPLS core where basic segment routing has been already enabled. This is the data center side 1, this is the data center side 2. For CE1 IP address is 192.168.11.11 and for CE2 it is 192.168.22.22. So basic reachability control plane is working fine and data plane is also working fine. So in the basic scenario if you try to ping from CE1 to CE2 it will take the shortest path. If P5 is advertising C2's route to P1, then shortest path from P1 to P5 is via P P3. But requirement may be there from C1 that he needs the lowest delay path to reach to the C2. So in that case SR policy is required on the head end that is P1 to calculate the lowest delay path. So P1 will have, will have all the information populated in his SRT database and based on that one he will calculate the base path suitable based on the constraint requirement that is lowest delay. But in this scenario, we are just using normal segment routing. So in the data plane, it will use the shortest path. Let's see the configuration part. So on the C1 side, if we see show route BGP. We are learning the 192.168.22.22 from remote site and if we check on CE2 site, we are learning the 192.168.11.11. So control plane is working fine. Let's do the trace route. So if you see the bottom level is 24010 that is the VPN V4 label advertised from PE5 to PE1 for this 192.168.22.22 prefix and the top level is 16005 that is segment routing label which we need to reach to PE5. So if we see here data data plane is also working fine. So let's check on each and every hop how exactly the data plane looks like. If we check on the P1 for the destination sorry yep yeah. so we are learning this route from the PE5 next stop is PE5 that is going via the P3 and you can see here we are going to push this 16,005 level for the PE5 and total label imposed will be 2 one is the VPN V4 level received from PE5 and the top level will be segment routing level to reach to PE5. So let's say how we can reach to the PE5. So this is the label DSR. Next stop is 
13.3 that is P3 and we are going to use this 16,005 that is segment routing level for the destination PE5. This is the MPLS table looks like. So we are going the we are getting the unlabeled packet from this CE site. We are going to push first VPN level and second level will be this outgoing level will be the 16,005 top level. And we are going to forward it on the 0001 interface towards the P3. So let's check the entry on P3 side. For, pre, uh, for destination PE5. So if we see that our local level is 16,005 means the packet which we are getting from PE1 it will be with this particular level and we are going to use the pop that is implicit null because penalty mate hop popping will happen here both nodes are connected to each other and then packet is going to forward towards the PE5. The second entry is for TILFA, so time being you can ignore it. Let's verify the entries on the PE5. Show MPLS forwarding VRF, VRF ABC prefix, then 192.168.22.22. Because P3 has already done the penultimate hop popping, so packet will reach with this VPN level 24010 on PE5 and he will remove that level and he is going to forward it on this particular interface. Let's check this safe entry. So safe entry for 192.168.22.22 prefix. So we can see that local label is 24010. The traffic we are expecting the label with 24010. And then based on that level, we are going to push that traffic towards the CE2. This is what end-to-end -end packet flow looks like. So we are getting the a trace route or ping or any traffic with the destination 192.168.22.22. P1 is going to push the labels first one is VPN label and then second one is the segment routing label for R5 that is 16,005. So P will forward the packet to P3, P3 will do the penultimate hop popping and he is going to forward that packet towards the P5. So based on this label value 24010 packet will push that uh, P5 will push that packet towards the CE2 and then CE2 will reach, uh, receive that packet and in turn he will reply along with the same path. So let us see how the Wireshare capture looks like here. So I have captured this packet between the PE1 and P3 interface. So if you see here the top label is the 16,005, 16,005 which is the segment routing label for PE5 and the bottom label is VPN label and this packet source IP address is 192.168.11.11 and destination is 192.168.22.22.